Hi guys, it's Wednesday and Wednesday means it's time to talk about books. Every time when we meet on here on this channel it's time to talk about books because this channel is totally dedicated to books, books, books and everything that has been written. So, why is Wednesday special? Wednesday is the day when I want to talk about other people's works. So, we are not talking about what we are going to write, we're not going to talk about my stuff, we're talking about authors, book series, single books, whatever, a poem, a song, sometimes you might even talk about the movie adaptation to it, but let's see how it goes, because from now on, every Wednesday, hopefully there will be a video out talking about other people's works, and I'd love to say I will just present the books, and then it's up to you if they qualify for recommendation or for overrated, but to be honest, I have such a strong opinion on books that... No, I will tell you up front whenever I think something is overrated, but I will not push my opinion onto you. I will just explain why I think it is the way I think it is, and then it's totally up to you to disagree or whatever. And if you disagree, leave me a comment. If you agree, leave me a comment as well. Just tell me what you think about the books I'm talking about. And no, definitely not judging on taste, because taste is something that is not open for debate. You have your taste and that's totally good. I will never judge you. Because why would I? I can't talk about handiwork, how it's crafted, how it's plotted, grammar mistakes. There are a lot of things I can actually have a look at, but that even if it qualifies in every single category, it might still not be the book that you like the most. Hence, we're going to sort it in what you like, just because you like it, no explanation needed, and why, from a literature point of view, things are there to be discussed. So, long story short, let's get started. Let's kick this category off with one of my favorite book series of all times. Susan Cooper and the Dark is Rising. Susan Cooper is a fantasy author. The first book, Oversea on the Stone, that one, was written in 1965. The fifth book of the series, that is, by the way, called Sequence, The Dark is Rising Sequence, the fifth book was written in 1970, was published in 1977. The books are about fantasy. They are for young children, not young children, for children and young adults, classical fantasy books. What makes them different? What are they all about? In general, the whole background story to the Ducks Rising sequence is King Arthur, Celtic mythology, in general, just some legends from the island. And the stories are taking place in southern Cornwall and in Wales because the author, according to the internet, has family ties there and you can tell that she has been there. It's not just research from the book. No internet back on the day, <laughs> but it's not just research from a book. You can tell that she has been there and the way she describes the landscapes, she loves it. You can tell that she loves the scenery and is really smitten with the picturesque countryside. That is the backstory that you don't need to know anything about because the main story is about children fighting the evil. It's a very, very classical good versus evil and in this case light were the stark thing, hence the ducks rising. And we have several children. So to introduce them to you really quickly, in the first book, Oversea on the Stone, again, there are three siblings, two brothers, one sister. They meet their grand uncle Merriman, Mary, and go on a treasure hunt with him. The treasure they're hunting is the Holy Grail. Really, really strongly attached to King Arthur, but... <laughs> It doesn't matter, because the Holy Grail is just a treasure hunt in this case, and it's very adventurous, and the three children there. Then you have the second book, where you meet Will Stanton. Will Stanton. And Will Stanton is one of the old ones. He knows old magic, he is part of people that fall out of time, can actually travel through time, maybe even bend time. He is special, and he knows magic. He's the seventh son of the seventh son, and he is the youngest of the old ones. But old ones can actually talk in their mind with each other. And he is a boy, and at the same time he is an old one. So he is struggling with 
boyish issues and fighting Eva. And in the third book, Greenwich, the one we're going to talk about a bit more in a second, in Greenwich, Will meets the three siblings. And together they fight the evil again. Fourth book, Will meets another boy. If you count it, we have five children, only one girl, but that's a different story. We have five children and one great uncle Mary. Great uncle Merriman is the one who links everyone to each other and links time to the situations and he is really, oh, you will be mind blown with the last book when you read who he is. And these five and uncle Merriman, great uncle Merriman, they are actually the ones fighting the battles. They have support from other old ones, from from people who just love them and just support them. But they are actually the ones fighting, one way or another. And in addition to that, the bad guys come in disguise. So it's not always very clear who's going to be the bad guy. And the children don't understand how it works when someone is actually the bad guy after behaving like a good guy for that long and it's a bit confusing to them to understand the human well not human the evil the devil mind basically and um very classical fantasy good versus evil very philosophical and because of the age because of the age of the books by the way they age really really well because of the fantasy setting it's not really important that they don't have mobile phones and they just go on a good old treasure hunt in a place where you have no no connection to, but a proper landline. <laughs> mm. Because of the age, the language is a bit different compared to the books right now, the books being published over the last 10 years. Being different means more grammar, more words, a wider vocabulary, better... more detailed more detailed descriptions without being boring. <laughs> and yes, it's basically a children's book series sequence. But I think if you start with this one, Greenwich, don't start with the other two because the other two, I mean the first two, they are, I think, written for children. So if you start with this one and then you work your way back, totally fine. You will not dislike the book, but if you start with the first one, you might be disappointed if you're older than 12, 13. If you're 12 or 13, start with the first one. <laughs> Greenwich. It's my favorite book of the series, and it's about Jane, the one girl, the one female child. She is invited to join the females of the village to build, construct the Greenwich. And the Greenwich is an ancient offer to the sea. So basically it's just being built to be destroyed. And every woman is allowed to touch it and then make a wish. And Jane is actually making a wish. And her wish. In this book, where we have a lot of magic happening, a lot of really high magic, with the dark ones doing that, and our Will and Great Uncle Merriman doing, doing the white magic thingy, we have Jane, and Jane just wishes, because Jane feels stuff. She doesn't think about stuff. When she's experienced something, she feels it. But before talking, she thinks about it. And I think she's the brightest character of all in these books. With her, She's being open-minded. When someone new joins the group, she's like open-minded, not being naive, not being stupid, like, oh yeah, be my friend, blah, blah, blah. But she's open to suggestions on what to do now and whom to invite and she's really really friendly well-mannered but I mean well-mannered they all are <laughs> mm. and the good thing even though this book is really really dark it's very obvious that there will be no harm done to the children and the great uncle keeps saying it saying no don't worry you will not be harmed in this so the whole fight evil were this good I know I should say this is the highlight of the book, but it's not. The Greenwich is. And I think if you read just one book of them, just one, choose this one. Really, do it. Do it. 
proper language from a few years back. <laughs> a story that never ages whatsoever, and if it ages, it ages well. A lot of UK love, basically, and in these times, with the current situation, there should be more love towards UK. I mean, lovely people, lovely countryside, lovely legends. So, all I can say is, if you really like fantasy, read it. Read it. Oh, one last word about the fantasy character of these books. We're not talking about werewolves and vampires and about Withered schools, we talk about another world hidden within the world we live in. And it's very real and at the same time very fantastic, so it's very balanced. And you could say they're just books with some fantasy elements, but I don't think this would be fair with this whole time traveling thingy. I think that I would consider it the momentum of now in a story that started a thousand years back and will continue for the next thousand years. That's it. Read it. Bye.